Okay, the recording is going. Whee! <laughs> Hello! Hello! Again. Take <laughs> three or four. So, we have gathered here today to talk about a book that comes out tomorrow, December 1st. Tell me about the book. The book is called Outrunners from the Ruins and it's a uh, David Dowie solo project, let's say, uh, and it follows the stories of eight survivors as they try to make their way in a post-apocalyptic United Kingdom. Um, so, uh, in order to do this, they have found... Uh, they, uh, when the storm hit, a lot of them took themselves to underground bunkers that have been long forgotten since the Cold War and World War Two, uh, and they've managed to survive. <laughs> okay, Up let's uh, now, uh, let's rewind a little bit. So, what first off, okay. what is the storm? What is the storm? Okay, the storm is a cataclysmic weather event that has wrecked the UK, right? There's sort of no warning, uh, and it's sort of a... What was the word I used? Um, this, they, uh, there's no uh, reason, let's say. Uh, mm -hmm. they, there's no like set reason. A lot of the characters discuss, oh, why has this happened? But there's nothing really set in stone as to what the storm is. It's just happened, and it's wrecked the place, and now they've got to deal with that. <laughs> Those yeah, events. So in the story world, it just exists. We just have to accept that this is part of the story, but uh, how exactly it works is not part of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of speculation and this and that, but the, as as a couple of them say, they're not meteorologists and they can't <laughs> really explain or understand what's going on, so their best bet now is to just try and survive, and they 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 primarily do that by hiding out in these, these bunkers, but on top of that, they also think that, well, eventually we're going to scavenge the local area dry or a lot of the stuff that is in the local area isn't going to have survived. So we need to go further afield. And mm -hmm. to do that, obviously, we're going to need vehicles. And so, outrunners. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's sort of the premise. A few of them, uh, a lot of the stories that we follow, it focuses on the people with vehicles. But another mm -hmm. side of it is that the there are people who remain in the bunkers and their whole thing is trying to get the bunkers up and running and and making sure the people in them who have, who have found their way to them making sure that those people survive and that they don't eat too many rations for example because otherwise there's not going to be anything for next week or what's the deal with the toilets you know like these toilets haven't been working for <laughs> decades and now suddenly they're in full use again like oh that's a massive problem that's just <laughs> happened so yeah um there's a lot of that uh and i it was partially inspired by the whole like i'm a big fan of the van life right hashtag van <laughs> life uh, i take the yeah hashtag van life, hashtag van life. Uh, let's take the super bus away to uh the europe all the time i mean law you've laid your eyes on it your own two eyes on it when it rolled into Estonia that Indeed. glorious time um, so uh, but a big part of that is building the van and so a lot of the characters when they're building their vehicles it takes inspiration from that which is I really enjoyed that um, I could I could really put my, sort of my own flavour into it if that mm -hmm. makes sense like uh, this is sort of how I do the electric system um, and, and a couple of the characters like they replicate that so I, I know what I'm talking about and those parts feel the, feel the strongest to me personally mm. um, uh, like I'm <laughs> I know right it's, as I'm writing it's like I know this this is I just gotta get it down um, so that was cool originally though it was only supposed to be uh, six or seven stories I think it was supposed to yeah it was supposed to be seven stories originally and one of them, called Flotilla, is about... Um, <laughs> I did so much research into this story. I did so much research into Flotilla. 
Um, and the whole premise of the story is that the cruise ship, or not the cruise ship, the ferry that takes people from uh, the UK to Europe, like between Harwich and the Netherlands, um, they managed to survive the storm out in out in the channel or out in the ocean. And they have now taken it upon themselves to help um, oil platforms in the North Sea and, and other boat survivors, and they eventually form together. I tried writing that story so many times. I thought this is a great idea. I did so much research. I know how many beds the Hollandico has got on it now, and I I played the fast and loose with the names a little bit. So you know that they're the Stena Hollandica and Stena Britannica, but it's not that obvious, you know. So. <laughs> I, I really, really wanted to get in there and do that, um, but I had to know when to call it, right? I tried writing that story so many times and I just had to be like, no, this isn't working. So I brought it back down to six stories. And then when I was sort of like, right, these six stories are ready, I'm ready to move forward with this, suddenly uh, I was sort of inspired to write a couple more stories. And uh, the one, the story number eight, <clears throat> story number seven um there's there's a big story moment in it that happens and it's quite important to outrun us further down the line um but it's it it ends quite abruptly and i'm slightly worried about that but there's mm. not really a whole bunch i can do with it without going into sort of like a 60 page sort of like this is this is where this leads basically a lot of that comes up in the future book and I'll talk about the future book in a minute because the reason these these stories even exist in the first place is because of the the first book. Um, <laughs> sorry, where... that is actually the next book. Okay, so before you go on, uh, I wanted to clarify something. So if this wasn't clear from all the UK and Thriline and uh, and Van Life uh, notes, then uh, Outrunners is not un unlike the chaos nova stories outrunners is not the story far far away in far far future it is a story in quite nearish future possibly alternate history specifically britain more more mm -hmm. specifically the bunkers of britain right yeah and and the roads <laughs> the so roads. Bunk bunkers roads and vehicles yeah there's a lot of that um so Going going back real quick, story seven ends kind of abruptly. I couldn't do much with that. But then I started writing story eight for one of my favourite mm -hmm. characters, a character called Ada. She totally loves this whole apocalypse thing. It's like what she's been waiting for her whole life. So like, I'm never going to have to pay taxes again. I'm never going to fill in another <laughs> form. If I want to build a house somewhere, I can just plot up somewhere and build it. She's mistaken in this, but that's her sort of thinking. Um... <laughs> And story eight uh, follows her and a, uh, and another survivor that she's found, and I had such fun writing it. It was <laughs> they end up at an airport, and I don't want to spoil too much, um, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of action, there's a lot of Ooh. disagreements between the two of them on how to handle the apocalypse. Um, <laughs> And because a lot of the time, uh, Jack is the other character she's with, and a lot of the time he gets her to focus on the long term survival, and then he sort of has a go at her for not focusing on the short term. So there's there's a bit of character friction there, and Ada gets really, really grated with him. But the situation that they find themselves in, it's probably not best to turn your back on people you can otherwise trust, despite yeah, okay. the fact that there's massive arguments going on. Um, so that's that yeah i had such great fun writing that and that really that's that helped me set up the story um a lot better mm. for bunker hunter um so bunker hunter was the original this is where this all started i was writing a, i was writing a story called bunker hunter um it wasn't called bunker hunter at the time it didn't even have a title at the time i think it was just izzy's izzy's adventure you know right mm. so um but I didn't have all the sort of lead up to Bunker Hunter established. I didn't have the world established properly. So I went back and I started writing, working on these, these short stories to sort of establish this, this world. 
and eventually they became their own stories and they all of them really build up the world really well so like you've got an army group who have survived up in Kings Lynn you've mm -hmm. got the people who now inhabit Anchor which is an actual telephone exchange that was built during the Cold War uh, in Birmingham the place is riddled with asbestos. It's not the best place to survive. It's probably going to flood eventually, but it's, you know, it's a cool place to explore. Um, taking a couple of liberties with the design. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> just a couple, not a low. Uh, and it's entirely reasonable, uh, the things that have happened there. Um, so, yeah, with these eight short stories, they are really setting up the, the, the world for Bunker Hunter. And then after Bunk Hunter comes Riley's Riley's Runners, and then it sort of goes on from there a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I got I got a really clear idea of what the story is going to be throughout all of them, um, and yeah, uh, it's it's uh, that from the ruins is coming out tomorrow. I Whee! can't really believe it. I'm a little <laughs> bit like bu -bu 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 -bu. Uh, pre ordering was possibly one of the worst things I could have done to myself because I <laughs> uploaded the book to Amazon and then for the next however long it's not released you're just sort of panicking and worrying and oh my god why hasn't Amazon put the cover up I uploaded a cover it's there just put it on the damn book come on um, there's all that but oh yeah, I'm really excited I hope people I hope people like it mm -hmm. uh, and it's available on Amazon tomorrow 1st of December yep uh, while we're at it, so this was your solo project, but you also had several people kind of assisting and helping you. Tell me about I those did. people. All the legendary people who helped me. Um, I've got to say a massive thank you to Carl. He provided a lot of the uh, sort of, uh, let's say, security-based information mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the... Enforcement. So... <laughs> My view of the apocalypse would be like, ah, oh, the world has ended, so now everybody's going to help each other, all the survivors are going to come together, and, you know, it's going to be big happy mm -hmm. communes and solar panels and all this, you know, like, everyone's going to pull their weight and everything's going to be fine. Um, but actually, that's probably not how things would go, and Carl helped introduce a lot of the, let's say, paranoia and mm -hmm. reality to the yeah, situation, which... This is not how people actually work. <laughs> yeah. So I've got to say a massive thank you to Cole for that, it's huge help. Uh, and I wouldn't actually know him without you, so <laughs> thanks to you, connection. Uh, Claire has been a massive help. Uh, there was a section in one of the stories that was all about uh, how to wire batteries and inverters and solar panels and all this sort of thing in. It took up about two pages. It was way too long, but because that's my thing, it's like, ah, I know what I'm doing. This. Yeah, I got this. Um, but actually, with her help, we trimmed that down quite significantly and uh, it just flows much better. It's still got the sort of uh, it still conveys the information without bogging the story down, which is what you want in any situation, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, so a massive thanks to Claire for that and also a huge huge shout out to Vanessa a uh, friend of the writing group and friend of Chaos Nova uh, so without her I don't think it would have happened she has provided a lot of encouragement and confidence um, with her feedback on the stories like she really enjoyed the stories her enthusiasm for them really got me going uh, so, yeah, a uh, massive thanks to her. And uh, her feedback's been invaluable as well. Uh, and it's just sort of, it's her fault, and I am going to blame her for this, that there are two additional stories on the top of this, and it's not just six stories, it's actually eight. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the extra work there, Vanessa, but I had a great time. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Right, so in the hopes that this recording actually did work, I think uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, give mm. me the whole speech about the title and uh, and Amazon and all that. Okay, okay so, so Outrunners, Outrunners from, from the Ruins, Ruins is coming out tomorrow, tomorrow December the 1st, uh, and uh, you will be able to get it on Amazon, or it's available on Amazon now, you can pre-order it, uh, and we will be putting it up on the website as well in time. <laughs> that requires a little bit more thought, but we'll be getting time there. Time permitting. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so yes. Uh, and if you do get a copy of Outrunners, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to write the review.
We also, love reviews. Also, also, in December. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut off the recording now. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.